Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, the Oppenheimer Ranch News Network. Tonight, we're going to discuss space debris. Now, if you weren't aware, there are thousands upon thousands of satellites and other space debris from the last five decades floating around above your heads. And tonight, two old spacecraft may be about to catastrophically collide in orbit. Now, we're looking at low Earth orbit here, and the amount of debris is beyond reproach. It's catastrophic. And Leo Labs Incorporated, the group that has been monitoring all the space debris, well, they put out a warning yesterday that they are monitoring a very high-risk conjunction between two large defunct objects in low Earth orbit. And the low Earth orbit debris is the debris here. And we'll cover that in greater detail shortly. Now, these objects are gigantic. In fact, these objects are bigger than all of the meteors that they've been claiming are going to hit on Election Day and recently. They're gigantic, and we're going to cover the size and girth of them with you tonight. Two dead satellites may collide, and that's really, really bad. Now, why is it really, really bad? Well, something called the Kessler Syndrome, which we're going to go over in great detail tonight. The Kessler Syndrome is a theory proposed by NASA scientist Donald J. Kessler back in 1978, used to describe a self-sustaining cascading collision of space debris in low Earth orbit. In an article published June 1st, 1978, in the American Journal of Geophysical Research, which was peer-reviewed, they determined that this cascading collision of space debris is not only possible, <laughs> but it is probable, just based on the amount of debris. Now, let's get back to the article about What's about to collide here? Uh, let's pick the better of the two. Here it is. Now, Leo Labs, which we have just showed you the tweet from here from yesterday, Leo Labs Incorporated, the company that tracks space junk in Earth's orbit, announced it was monitoring a potential collision of two objects on October 16th. That's tonight. So I guess we'll know tomorrow if it occurred, or they'll keep it quiet until the cascading effect happens and then game on. Now the objects are a defunct Soviet satellite and a discarded Chinese rocket stage. They have a combined mass of 6,170 pounds. Experts fear the collision could spur a chain reaction of collisions, kicking the Kessler syndrome into effect. All right, now let's dive more a little deeper into the Kessler syndrome. The scientific journal containing the original research on the physical, chemical, and biological processes that contribute to the understanding of Earth, Sun, and solar systems is the Geophysical Research Journal. And they published the Kessler syndrome paper a long time ago. It's also called the Kessler effect. Collisions, cascading, or ablation cascades is a scenario in which density of objects in low Earth orbit is high enough that collisions between objects cause a cascade where each collision generates space debris that increases the likelihood of further collisions, so on and so forth. And that is the cascade. One piece becomes a thousand pieces, a thousand become 10,000, become a million, become a billion, and it's game over. Now let's quickly watch this piece from a documentary with Kessler himself explaining his hypothesis. I'm Don Kessler. I'm the former senior scientist for orbital debris research at NASA. Space is a natural resource like no other. The area we use has become polluted with objects by the debris generated when they collide. What's alarming is that the problem will get worse, even if we stop adding stuff. This happens as a result of collisional cascading. Objects collide at very high velocities, creating a large number of fragments that go on to collide with other objects, creating even more fragments, which then collide with more objects and on and on. 
This phenomena is sometimes referred to as the Kessler syndrome. Don is often referred to as the father of older debris. Uh, in a positive way, not the native way. <laughs> but he's responsible for better understanding the debris, what it means to space operations. At the beginning of the space program, there was a general attitude that space was a big sky, that you could put anything in it that you wanted and not fill it up. The problem that you quickly run into is because these things are traveling so fast, they run into each other. And as soon as they run into each other, they create a lot of debris and the rate of collisions will then increase. And as the collisions increase, you make more debris. And those fragments go collide with other things and you start really making it more difficult and more expensive to operate in space. After convincing NASA that this was an issue, we launched a program of investigating the problems of space junk with the primary goal of researching and developing solutions to keep space a reusable resource. One of my first jobs was to define the natural space environment. And what gave me an advantage over other people in looking at the orbital debris environment is I used those same models that we used to understand the natural environment and applied them for the first time to the satellite environment. Part of what I did was borrow some from kinetic energy equations and the thermodynamic equations of molecules in a box bouncing around. And uh, even though we've got much more sophisticated models today, they all come up with the same answer. The orbital debris problem is a classic tragedy of the commons problem, but on a global scale. If we don't change the way we operate in space, all this results in an exponentially increasing amount of debris until all objects are reduced to a cloud of orbiting fragments that are capable of destroying any spacecraft that attempts to operate anywhere within that cloud. Wow! If that is not something to give you pause, then nothing is. Now, the problem therein lies from the, just the enormity of this junk. Run into is because these things are traveling so fast, they run into each other. And so I mean, take a look at all the debris here and, and the cascading effect. If one hits the other and the other hits the other, therein lies the problem. This guy is a little creepy. <laughs> so we have a huge problem with the amount of space debris that currently exists. And now we have, uh, Elon Musk adding insult to injury, and launching dozens and hundreds of satellites at a time monthly into space. It's only going to get worse, as if we need something else to make it worse. The Kessler syndrome is real. And with all these small satellites being launched into low Earth orbit, it is inevitable that there will be a cascading effect and debris re-entering Earth sometime soon. It might be a CME that kicks this off. Uh, there's lots of evidence that foreign governments could employ uh, a rocket to kick off the Kessler syndrome prior to war. Now, this is no way to, for you to calculate what would happen if you made this happen. We would have almost every satellite or piece of debris, almost all of it once it cascades, would then re-enter. So it would be the most amazing meteorite display ever that is man-made coming soon to a planet near you thanks to everyone that didn't care about what they were doing and now NASA has been defunded so this debris will continue to spin out of control adding insult to injury in the future and allowing us to bite our nails just a little bit more Hope you got something out of the video. 2020. It's not that funny, but we predicted it. That's why we started the channel. So enjoy the ride. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when the Kessler syndrome is about to take you out. Well, probably won't take us out, but it will take every satellite out. It will end your internet. It will end communications. It will end banking. It will end the modern world we live in. And the powers that be know this. And why, are, why aren't we taught this in school? Why aren't there solutions? Why do we continue to inject dozens of satellites into a space environment that is about to catastrophically implode upon us? Because, because the capitalistic model, what you're looking at here is space junk. It's the same as burying trash in a landfill. 
it makes no sense whatsoever. That's why they're doing it, for the greater good. <laughs> Give me a break. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when the powers that be are, well, they're about to take us all out on purpose. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Click on one of the other boxes illuminating for more information. Shh, subscribe to the channel and share this video. We love you. Long day.